Thanks for clicking on Wayne.com to watch Inside the Zone. He's Justin Kenny of the New Sentinel. I'm Glenn Marini. And, Justin, we're entering week four. So we feel like maybe we've got a good idea of what's out there until you take a look at all the results yeah. from week three. Obviously, Mother Nature had something to do with how the games played out to a certain degree, but how much do you look at last week's results and say, you know, if we played this again a week later, it would be the exact same? Do you think that's the case? or It's, t it's tough to look at. You know, some teams, I thought, you know, you look at East Noble, Homestead, and I talked to Coach Luke Amstutz yesterday, and I said, you know, how much did that affect you, that playing a little bit Friday, coming back into Saturday? And he goes, you know, we didn't put too much thought into it, but we, we kind of took what we saw Friday as kind of, um, okay, we know what we're doing in terms of scheme, and it's going to pay off on Saturday. So they didn't change a lot of things from Friday to Saturday. I think some, a lot of coaches were kind of like, I'm not going to delve too much into changing a lot of things overnight, but it definitely throws coaches and, and players for a little bit of a curve, especially when you're starting early on Saturday like some teams did. And I feel like the NHC is, is the most mixed bag of Isn't results it? and teams that could possibly compete for a conference title. I mean, anybody could complete for, compete for a conference title at this point. Um, but additionally, with week one, we always say after week one, uh, you can't just look at that game as a example for the rest of the season. I think week three is the same way. Yeah. So I, I don't know. We're in week four. I don't know if we know what we've got yet. No, especially in the conferences. You know, ACAC and NHC just getting started in those conferences. You look at the NHC especially, and you got Norwell there down there at the bottom at 0-1. you got Homestead 0-1. Um, you got Belmont sitting there that's, that's 3-0 and overall. And they're looking tough. You know, DeKalb's looking tough. You know, they dropped a close one to New Haven. So that's a conference in particular you look at and you just, you really don't know right now. I mean, it's very rare at the high school level where you have a conference from top to bottom where anybody can beat anybody. And that's the NHC this year. Yeah, and let's start off talking about week four games with the NHC. Carroll at New Haven. You're talking about two 3-0 and teams, teams that are ranked in their respective top ten for their class going into this week's clash. What do you see as being the big key uh, on Friday at New Haven? I think it's, it's Carroll's offense. It needs to get going. Uh, I, I like Carroll's defense, but I don't know if it's going to be able to keep New Haven off the scoreboard enough for Carroll to win if Carroll really can't get that offense in sync. Uh, you know, they win a 10-0 against Huntington North two weeks ago, 22-19 against Norwell, a big come-from-behind win for Carroll last week. But maybe last week against Norwell is a little bit of a step in the right direction for them offensively, but they need to keep it going because uh, New Haven's going to put up points. Uh, something to be said, I think, for scoring when you need to. Uh, Carroll put up, of those 22 points, 15 in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So uh, that was one of the games not really affected by the rain, so maybe more reflective of, of what we'll see week in and week out. But uh, if you're Carroll, how do you get that going? How do you get that consistency on offense? They've used multiple quarterbacks. Uh, Cody Dinan had a good game on Friday against Norwell. Uh, but how do you get that consistency if you're Doug Dinan and the rest of the Chargers? Oh, you mentioned the quarterbacks. You know, Cody Dinan had a good game on Friday, and I think, you know, Doug Dinan and the coach will want to see that again. We want to see some continuity there at the quarterback and get that established. Once you're not rotating guys in, it's very tough for high school kids at, at any level, but especially high school kids when you're having different quarterbacks coming at different times. You know, it can, it can be tough for them to adjust, you know, from guys' different calls, you know, and stuff like that. So, once you have that established quarterback, and hopefully Carroll has it with Cody Dynan kind of settling in in that role, then Carroll can go forward and be like a seamless transition offensively for them, uh, you know, each possession because you're going to have the same guy there behind center. And New Haven, they've got the running game. Nishan, Buddy Jones. Buddy Jones. and He's tough. Their defense in years past, I think we, we've mentioned it many times, uh, has been overlooked. Uh, they're giving up 14 a game. Uh, DeKalb scored 13 on them last week. They had a little trouble with the Barons, uh, but came back on Saturday to win. If you're New Haven, how do you approach this game, and what are some of the keys to get things going for you? You know, establish the running game. You mentioned Buddy Jones. I mean, that guy is a phenomenal runner. Uh, get him going on the ground and use Vance Shear at quarterback as kind of a change of pace and kind of spread Carroll's defense out. Uh, Carroll is a solid defense. There were Dylan Connor in the middle, phenomenal linebacker. Uh, so, you know, Carroll's going to make it tough. And for, for New Haven, grind it out and get that running game going. And once you establish that, if they can, everything else will kind of fall into place for them. If you had to pick one, who would you pick? This is a tough one, I think. Especially the NHC. I mean, you never yeah. know. I mean, who, yeah. who would have picked East Noble last year? It could week? be a 20-point ball game or it could yeah, be a one-point ball yeah, game. Yeah, definitely. So I'm going to take New Haven uh, late, but... It's nothing where I'm running to and call my bookie to, 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 to place a bet because the NHC right now is just topsy-turvy. I really I couldn't tell you from week to week, you know, a power pull in that, in that, in that conference. Yeah, it, it's, been, uh, it's been interesting, let's just put it that yeah, way. For sure. Um, Leo versus Lures is another interesting game because 
Uh, these are teams uh, they met last year, Leo. Uh, we all know how, how Lewis suffered in the regular season last year. That is not going to be the case this year. Yeah. Um, but as far as this game goes, what do you see as being the major factors? Because Lure's offensive firepower, I mean, they are big play right from the get-go. We saw it in the scrimmage against Wenger. We've seen it basically every week. They can hit you in the first quarter with a big, deep pass and score easily. Yeah, for sure. I think the big matchup is the Lure's offense against the Leo defense. Leo's pitched back-to-back shutouts the last two weeks, and it's been a, a, a team where it's been led by their defense, which is kind of rare for Leo, especially the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. But it's a young offense. It's kind of still getting it, you know, going, and gears are kind of low clog still a whole new offensive line a new quarterback and now week four coach Souter is hoping okay the offense is starting to pick it up a little bit but it's a defense that has kind of led the way for them so the big matchups are going to be on the outside uh can they can they handle austin mack can they handle terrell johnson in the slot uh you know if noah wazinski's given time back there you could pick him apart but uh you know that's a that's a, a matchup that i want to see in, in terms of if leo's defense can match up against uh, Lewis's offense and kind of slow him down. Now i got to get some pressure on him. Jawan Allen, I think, could play a big role in this game. Can yeah. they contain him? If you take a look at Leo's defense, he's the one guy, if you had to pick one, that would really scare you if you're, if you're scouting them as Lures. Yeah, no doubt. And the number that, that jumped out to me is Lures is running a two-game winning streak, regular season winning streak, the first time since September of 2012. Wow. And, and that jumped out at me. Just I know we, had, we knew the struggles from last year, but it's still a number that you look at and you're, man, Lures hasn't had a two-game regular season winning streak in almost two years. Well, and last year, 34-7, to Leo, not going to be I, – I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick Leo to win by, what, what is that, four scores? Yeah, 27. Whew, yeah. That would be tough to repeat. Yeah, and, I, I, you know, conversely, I don't know if I can pick Lures to win by four scores. Mm-hmm. So, but, I mean, anything can happen. It's just a, it's a good barometer game, especially for Leo uh, in the middle of the season kind of things for them. So um, it, it'll be a good game. So, But definitely it's not going to be the blowout we saw last year. Yeah. Um, moving on. Northside Wayne. Northside is an interesting case to study for me because you look at it and if you take the week one game out and you say, all right, they beat Delta at their place relatively handily. Mm -hmm. A one-point loss to Dwenger where the weather was certainly a factor. The game finished up on Saturday. If they had beaten Concordia and the only blemish on their record would be a one-point loss to Bishop Dwenger, we'd still be talking about them as an SAC championship contender, one of the leaders, I think. But yeah. now uh, the road for Ryan Hall becomes tougher. Yeah, especially with the schedule. And, you know, you start off at Concordia. Once you drop that one and you have the conference games against Dwenger and, and Wayne and Snyder coming up and Lures, uh, all of a sudden it just kind of snowballs for them. And with a young team uh, – you know, talking to Ryan Hall, and he was excited about it. You don't hear very often an ex- excited coach after a loss. But he was excited with the way his guys competed Friday and Saturday against DeWanger. It's a young team. It's growing. But it's going to make young mistakes, and it did against DeWanger in terms of you give up a long touchdown the first play of the game Friday. Uh, you score a touchdown, miss the extra point, and it comes down to a one-point game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, those, those executions of those small things – you know, compile to, to, to add up to big results, especially when you play a team like DeWanger that's not going to beat themselves. And it's just it, that, that's, the, that's the, the mark of a young team trying to grow. And, you know, we'll see against Wayne because Wayne is putting up some big-time points. Yeah, you said, I think I read in your article, uh, it's like 55 points, 55 and a half yeah. points a game, like fourth in the state is what Wayne's putting up. Yeah, yeah, How it's you scary. down? I don't know if you can. I'm talking to Kai Black, uh, the defensive back for Wayne, and, and I go, you know, because they're putting up a fair amount of points as well. Mm-hmm. And I go, why do you guys put up so many points? And he goes, well, the offense keeps scoring so quick, and we don't have time to really relax because they've got a lot of guys going both ways in Wayne. So, and Kai's one of the few that predominantly plays defense. He's like, you know, but, you know we go to the sidelines and we refresh, and by the time, you know, we, come, we get to the, to the sidelines, we're scored again. We've got to go back on the field. So Keon Powers has just been phenomenal at quarterback. He had a lot of experience his sophomore year playing quarterback. I thought there was going to be a little bit more of a, of a learning curve for him to kind of get immersed back in that position, but he's been phenomenal quarterback. And I'll say the one thing with him that has impressed me is the passing game hasn't really suffered. You know, you think of him as an athlete, you think of him as a runner first, but when he's had to pass, or even when he hasn't had to pass, the passing game has been pretty on point. Yeah, I thought going into the season he was going to be a little bit more of a Donovan and Clark at Southside mm-hmm. kind of quarterback. Okay, yeah, he's a quarterback, but he's really a, an extension of the running game there. But he's, he has been a phenomenal passer for them, and it has been surprising for me. If you're, if you're north side, Ryan Hall, defensive guy, loves the D. The challenge of going up against Wayne and his weapons, I mean, that has to be, if you're north side, the focus this week is trying to slow those guys down. And I know the coaches have to love 
at least the challenge of doing that from an X's and O's perspective. Yeah, for sure. And you kind of got to pick your poison. Are you going to sit back and try to match up with their playmakers downfield and kind of try to take away the passing game and, and make solid tackles? Or are you just going to come at them? And I think that's the challenge. And I, I haven't seen Wayne yet this year. I mean, they played down south for a couple right. games. And then they had the crazy game on Friday. So what do we see? I, you know, I don't know. Uh, how do you play that Wayne, Wayne offense that's so powerful? I think it's a kind of a pick-your-poison kind of thing because they can beat you either way. Well, we, uh, thanks to Mother Nature, we had Saturday games last week. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the scheduling gods, we will have a big game. Yep. On Saturday this week, Penn coming to face Snyder. It will be one of the biggest games in the entire state as far as week four goes. What do you foresee as being the biggest keys in this game? Because Snyder and Penn have seen each other before. I don't think either of them change much from right. year to year because why would you mess with success? Uh, but a lot of firepower in this game. Yeah, this game always goes down to in the trenches. A lot of, you could say that about every game, but particularly this game, because they are so evenly matched to the skill positions. Whoever is going to win that battle up front is going to win this game. And I know Snyder really wants to kind of avenge the 38-0 loss last year to Penn. I mean, that's standing out to them because it's been a competitive series for so long. But for them to come out and just get just blown off the field last year was big. And Snyder really wants to show, okay, we're number one in 5A right now. We kind of want to show that, that we deserve that ranking. And I think Saturday night they're going to come out ready to play. And Penn wants to show that it's the best team in the north in 6A. So uh, it's, it's a huge barometer game for both programs. Colton Painter is supposed to be starting quarterback for the Snyder Panthers in week two. He gets injured. He's on the, sling, uh, on the sideline last week in a sling. Missed last week's game. Uh, expected to miss this week's game. Obviously, Isaac Stiebling has some talent. Yeah. Uh, but is this a case where it would have been nice to have uh, just maybe some more experience from the varsity level at the quarterback position? Not that Isaac isn't going to do a fantastic right. job, but just uh, for peace of mind if you're Kurt Tippmann and maybe that entire coaching staff. Yeah, to have that safety net on the sidelines, you know you can put Golden Painter out there, and he's 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 seen it and he's done it. You know, to have that safety net would be huge. But Isaac Stiebling, at this point, you're kind of waiting for him to to struggle a little bit, and it hasn't. So yeah. if he comes out and has a big game against Penn on Saturday, all of a sudden you're really going to start looking at the quarterback position as as uh, as Isaac Stiebling's to to kind of dominate going forward. And I got a good taste of Snyder on Friday night. I, I was there for the beginning of that game. Their defense. We talk about it every year. I don't know where they get all the athletes and the playmakers, but Jesse Bates was making plays. At a Jesse Bates is always bed. making plays. That, I know that's one of your guys. That guy is. He's a I'm playmaker. Ball hawk, man. Uh, Jalen mean... Fowler had an interception. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were creating turnovers, not just taking advantage of, of you know, bad opportunities or, or misplays by Northrop. Creating turnovers, and that's something you think they can do against Penn? That's the big thing, you know, is if they can, they, can, they can really create turnovers and make some short fields for their offense and stuff. And, you know, they lose Alex Reese in the middle of that defense, and they haven't missed a beat so far. I mean, we say it time and time again, you know, next man in for Snyder, and it is literally a next man in. I mean, a guy comes in, he's, been, he's seasoned for a couple years, and comes in ready to play. And it's just um, it's a program that, you know, ceases to amaze you in terms of, you know, we watch these other programs, and, okay, they're young and this and that. It doesn't happen to Snyder. Yeah, you know they they just have a next guy in and they're they're ready to play and it's just the combination of their feeder programs and their coaching and their younger program. It's just they're ready to they're ready to come play. So there's never really a drop off at Snyder. It's a machine, and you know if you see a sophomore playing, that sophomore is really really yeah, good because sure. it's always juniors and seniors yeah. on the football no field and only playing one way for the most part. Yeah. So uh, if you can crack that lineup early, yeah, it's you're great. you're gonna have a heck of a career. Uh, other games of interest: Lakeland at Garrett, Norwell at Belmont, DeKalb at East Noble, I think, is an interesting game yeah. because we've seen, even in the loss last week to New Haven, DeKalb is an improved team, and they are not a, a W when you go no, into their no place doubt. or have them on the schedule on Friday night. Yeah, I talking to Coach Amstutz last night about East Noble, and he said, you know, that Warsaw loss week two, I mean, it was just a bunch of freak things. He didn't say they didn't deserve to lose. He legitimately said we deserve to lose, but bad turnovers in the second half, just kind of crumbling and falling apart in different places. For them to come out and be Homestead last week was huge. And he said, you know, our challenge was well, how, what do we do against Homestead? And he said, you know, we're going to play the pass and we're going to drop in coverage and try to take away and we're going to give them the run. And Homestead, they ran it a little bit, but they really didn't. They just continued to try to pass. And, and, and Coach Amstead was like, that's fine. We're going to defend the pass. We're going to give you the run. If you beat us with the run, fine. But we're not going to let you beat us, you know, vertically as, as Homestead's done so far this year. And it, it was huge for, for East Noble. So now... Uh, you go in, 
a you know, fresh start. The, the big thing about the Warsaw loss is it was non-conference. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, East Noble's sitting pretty, and they get to Calb, who, you know, it, we go back to the uncertainty and, and unpredictability of the NHC, and, you know, why not to Calb right now? Yeah, and they've got a tough... You know, with with Price of quarterback, and then with Will Christman, he's a tough guy to guard at six foot six, a receiver, and and Denton Gamble too in the running game. And they've got a big center as well. I mean, decent sized offensive line. They got some players. I'm not saying that they're going to go in there and and hammer East Noble, but this is going to be a game perhaps in years past where it hasn't been. Yeah, for sure. You look at last week. You know, everybody kind of expected okay, New Haven against DeKalb. Now DeKalb's kind of going to get exposed. They lose by seven. I mean, they're competitive against New Haven. And, you know, if you're going to competitive against New Haven, you've got a good shot of being competitive against East Noble. So uh, they're continuing to, to open eyes and surprise people, and Coach Kemp's done a phenomenal job. He has, and we'll have to see what they can do in week four on Friday night here on the Highlight Zone. Justin will have you covered all week in the new Sentinel. But for now, I'm Glenn. He's Justin. We'll see you next Monday.